Hey everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show and johnmorrisonline.com. So Sam, a supporting listener over on Patreon, sent me a video the other day and wanted to know what I thought about it. Now, I will link to that video in the show notes page for this episode, which will be johnmorrisonline.com slash 115. But let me quickly summarize what I think the author Mike Locke is ultimately saying. First, that freelance income is not sustainable and scalable because you're ultimately just trading time for money like a regular job. So you shouldn't focus on it as your end-all be-all for your career, and instead you should use it as a supplement to a job and focus long-term on building a product for residual income. Now, while I agree with a lot of what he says in the video, and I appreciate what he's trying to get you to do, which I think is good, I do have to say that I disagree with some of his primary points. And that's because the problems with freelancing aren't with freelancing itself. It's in how it's used. So let me give you a quick example. Shortly after I built Michael Hyatt's membership site, Platform University, as you might imagine, I had a lot of people contacting me to build them a similar kind of site. In fact, so much so that I came up with a new service offering called a clone. And I sold that clone for three grand. Now, building those sites took me somewhere between four and six hours because I already had all of the code and I'd even written down an implementation checklist of exactly what steps to take in order to build out and implement the clone. And I was clear with clients from the start that I was just giving them the site with colors and logos changed, no custom coding added on top of it or any of that. And guess what? They didn't care because that's what they wanted. And I ended up building a bunch of these kinds of sites. Now, if you look at what I made hourly, it was somewhere between 500 and 750 per hour. Well, my normal hourly rate at the time was 100. So I was making five times my hourly rate on these projects. And clients couldn't care less because they weren't paying me for my time. What they were paying me for was access, access to the code I'd already written. They were paying me for expertise in implementing it. And frankly, a lot of these people were paying me for speed because since I already had all the code, I had the implementation checklist, I could then crank out these sites very, very fast. So if you think of freelancing from a purely hourly rate standpoint, then yeah, it is just trading time for money like any old job and doing the math you'll probably find it hard to see how you're going to be able to reach your income goals. But dude, if you don't want to trade time for money, the answer is simple. Don't trade time for money. In fact, go to my Hire Me page right now, which is over at johnmorrisonline.com slash hire, hire. Do you see an hourly rate anywhere on there? I'll save you the trouble having to go there. No, you don't. In fact, I I don't even offer it anywhere on my site for a reason. So when you start thinking of your services as more than just your time, and you start thinking in terms of end results, which I harp on all the time, and offering them more as products instead of hourly services, then you can start to see how you can make the kind of income that you're ultimately after with freelancing that you dreamed of being able to make when you first got into this. And you can see how easily all of this can then start to scale because you're making so much for the time that you're investing. And this is why I harp on end results all the time because that's what clients care about. And when you do that, then you'll make you'll make more money and you'll work less those end products or end results are easier to market. And because you can do like I did with the implementation checklist, they're easily to easier to deliver. And if you choose, it'll be easier to outsource or hire someone to do it for you. So you can rake in the dineros while you sit on the beach sipping on some rum and coke or whatever you prefer. (laughs) So can you see what I'm saying about using end results here? Now, Here's one more example. A few years back, I saw how big the responsive design thing was getting. So I decided to throw my hat in the ring and I focused mainly on local small businesses. And I did that because they were just easier to sell, 
and they were a lot easier to make happy. So as I started building mobile responsive sites for local businesses, I then slowly developed a PHP framework that let me do it faster and faster each time. In fact, by the time I had it fully developed, I could go grab a bootstrap template and port it into my system in a matter of just a few hours. It was That's how simple it was. And then for each client site, I would just plug in some variables that were specific to that client and I could have their site out the door in less than a day. That's how efficient I was able to, to get with this. And the nice thing for them and me is that it would be a major upgrade from the previous site that they had. I mean, if you've seen some sites that local small businesses have, some of them can be pretty, pretty atrocious. So it was a significant upgrade. Now, I know that won't make you feel any better or feel better than everyone else because you, you're not hand coding every site you build from scratch. It won't make you feel smarter, but it will put food on the table and lots of it. So anyway, I put that framework and a full three module course up over on Patreon. It's called Lightning Responsive and you can get it as a supporting listener at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. All right. That'll do it for this episode. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content. If you know somebody would benefit from hearing this, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with them. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.